This is 5 on 20 News with Pedro Santa Cruz. And Jermaine Fox. Coming to you live from our studio in downtown Tucson. It is March 6th. Your mic's not on. Oh, my mic is on. What does that mean? It means you start again. Okay. Are we live? Okay, so can you just, just give yours at the beginning? Hey guys, you know, th these things happen, all right? I know that they're, sorry for the- So are we live right now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're gonna, right. We're well, let me just take the time to discuss something important. Can you hear, are we good? Am I good? Oh, they can hear me in there. What are you gonna discuss? Can you discuss something? Oh, uh, yes, I can discuss that I've been gone for two weeks and uh, Gambling rehab was wonderful. They treated me very nicely. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm hoping I won't be back. Mm. But uh, unlikely. Don't bet on it. Yeah. I'd... Oh, yeah. Arizona representative and the first formerly undocumented female legislator, Isela Blanca, was arrested at a Washington, D.C. protest to rally Congress on passing a DACA renewal bill. Hundreds of dreamers are, and supporters marched from the National Mall to the Capitol, where they sat in the middle of Independence Avenue and locked arms. Blanca said that she had a moral obligation to be at the event and be arrested by Capitol Police. The protest fell on the same day that Deferred Action on Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, was supposed to be rescinded. However, a federal court issued an injunction last month that stopped deportations for DACA recipients until the law is worked out. For weeks, both parties have been trying to come up with a solution, but have come to no agreement. Before the event, the DACA group renounced their support for the Democratic Party. One such recipient said he was withdrawing from the party until something happens for my brothers and sisters. The Democratic Party said since DACA recipients don't have deep pockets, they're cool with the decision. So money does matter. Mm, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it does. All right, the family of a mentally ill man who was killed after being shot by a stun gun while under the care of former Maricopa County, <clears throat> excuse me, Sheriff Joe Arpaio may get $7 million in a lawsuit settlement. Lawyers discussed two weeks ago that the case had reached a settlement but had not been disclosed uh, the amount until, but the amount wasn't disclosed until Friday at the Board of Supervisors meeting. The amount, <clears throat> excuse me, is now scheduled for a vote on Wednesday. The deal will resolve legal claims um, against Arpaio and his jail officers, but not the Phoenix Police Department, who was also involved in the incident. The case involves 44-year-old Ern, <coughs> excuse me, Ernest um, Atencio. I'm sorry. Thank you. Atencio, who was <clears throat> arrested by Phoenix police in 2011 on a misdemeanor assault charge after a woman claimed he was kicking on her door. Uh, officers had an earlier interaction with Atencio. Atencio. Uh, that same day at a convenience store when they concluded um, that his behavior was due to mental illness. The uh, lawsuit, <clears throat> excuse me, accused the uh, Phoenix police of <clears throat> well, my throat. I don't know what that is. Officer of attacking. Um, Atencio. Atencio at the uh, jail after he refused to take off uh, one of his shoes. It alleges that Arpaio's officer then jumped on Atencio. Atencio and formed a dog pile on the man, later killing him. Throughout Arpaio's 24 years as sheriff, he cost the uh, county $33 million um, in jail-related legal claims, and now he's running for senator. The state is thinking of implementing an Arpaio tax so uh, they can store away a legal defense fund if Arpaio uh, is elected senator. Save up those pennies, Arizona, because you're going to need it. Mm. A penny saved is a penny earned. Mm -hmm. 
Fewer visitors from Mexico are coming to Arizona, according to data from the U.S. Department of Commerce. The data shows a 10% drop in Mexican visitors compared to last year. A troubling statistic considering that Mexicans are the biggest source of international visitors. Mexicans made up about two-thirds of all foreign visitors to the state in 2016. To try and lure back Mexican visitors, the Arizona Bureau of Tourism has set up an aggressive marketing campaign to appeal to those living in central Mexico who would be swayed by the state's national beauty and outdoor activities. Becky Blaine from the Bureau of Tourism says that the exchange rate is one of the reasons for the decline in visitors. An official from Mexico City's Arizona Tourism Office said that Mexicans have also been more reluctant to visit since the passage of SB 1070, which allows law enforcement to request citizenship papers during routine traffic stops. They also said, the lack of direct flights from Mexican hubs such as Mexico City and Guadalajara impacts tourism levels. The official then coughed and whispered, plus the wall and Trump before clearing his throat and excusing himself. Gesundheit. <laughs> I like that. All right, uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna actually be um, reading from this paper here. Yeah, I do not I mind. Got, yeah, my contacts are a little dry from all of the um, crying I've been doing um, with just how great America is again and how, it's, how great it's been the last 13 months. Well, I don't know if you'll have enough paper for that, but, <laughs> but you know, do your best. I will, I will. All right. Well, Arizona Representative Drew John proposed a state constitutional amendment that would double the term lengths for state representatives and senators for, to four years. The proposal, HCR 2006, passed the House on a 32 to 22 vote on Monday, but it still needs to be voted on by the Senate. If approved, the proposal will move on to the November ballot uh, where voters will weigh in. However, if approved by voters, the new term limits wouldn't go into effect until 2021. Also, if approved, Drew John will try again and propose a law stipulating that all, lo all lawmakers with two first names get first dibs on the state house buffet table. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Because he has two first names. I think so. I like that. Is that, is that what it is? Uh, Whoever's writing these jokes is killing it. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> good work. Kill like I'm dead. Tucson City Council is considering the renewal of Downtown's Business Improvement District, or BID, at tonight's council meeting. <clears throat> the district sets up a property tax based on assessed value and uses the tax revenue to help pay for the Downtown Tucson Partnership. The partnership works to improve the downtown area through beautification projects, security, business recruiting, marketing, and more. The BID was established in 1998 and must be renewed every five years. If the council votes for the district, then a letter will be sent to all property owners within the district. 50% of the owners would need to send back a letter stating that they oppose the project in order for the BID not to be renewed. The Downtown Tucson Partnership expressed support for the project and encouraged mail carriers to leave the letter vicariously dangling in each property's doorway. It's a lot better than a flaming bag of poop. Really? You think so? Yes, I, I don't know. I don't like I don't, seeing that on my doorway. I think they're, uh, I think they're both pretty, pretty even to me. All right, fair enough. Uh, now, international and international news. All right. North Korea says that it is open to discussing getting rid of its nuclear weapons with the U.S. after Kim Jong-il uh, had a meeting with a South Korean delegator. Kim Jong Un also plans. You know, was Kim Jong Un also plans to meet uh, South Korean President Moon Jae In in April. The change of heart comes after a softening of tensions during the Winter Olympics, when Kim's um, <clears throat> excuse me, when Kim's sister travels to South Korea to attend the games. While at the meeting, North Korea pledged to not use conventional or nuclear weapons against its neighbor, despite frequent threats from um, from the North. Mm -hmm. Both sides also agreed to set up a uh, hotline between leaders to allow um, consultation to reduce military uh, tensions. So, good news. 
Of course, any moment now, our president will probably turn into uh, run it, ruin it with a tweet. Uh, so keep a lookout for that. Although I don't personally think Donald Trump has ever ruined anything, ever. It was interesting to hear that story about a hotline. It sounds sexy. Mm -hmm. Former drug company CEO and self-professed pharma bro Martin Shkreli was ordered to forfeit 7.36 million in assets after Shkreli was found guilty of defrauding investors in his hedge fund. Judge Kyle Matsumoto ordered Shkreli to hand over 5 million in a brokerage account and his stake in Viera Pharmaceutical, a company he founded. The judge last week said that Shkreli would be held responsible for over 10 million in financial losses related to his time heading up touring pharmaceuticals. That company was made famous when it was found that Shkreli brought, bought, the patient, bought the patent to a drug for AIDS and cancer, cancer patients and increased the price by 5,000%. Shkreli was convicted last August on three charges of deceiving hedge fund, hedge investors, and will be sentenced on Friday. He faces up to 20 years in prison. Among Shkreli's possessions that he might have to give up is the ultra-limited edition Wu-Tang Clan album, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, which was auctioned off to the highest bidder in 2015. Shkreli reportedly paid two million for the album, of which only one copy was released. According to inside sources, the $2 million album contains only audio of the Riz's cat rubbing its body against a microphone. Woo. The Florida Senate yesterday approved a bill that would raise the minimum age to purchase rifles to 21 and allow teachers in the state to carry guns in school. The state Senate voted 20 to 18 on the bill, which would also establish new mental health programs in Florida schools. The legislation was a response to the shooting of Mar Mar Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, where 17 people were killed with an AR-15 style assault rifle. The incident resulted in multiple, call multiple calls for more gun control, including from the students themselves, who have become high profile figures in the media of late. While Florida moved forward to deal with the problem, similar federal legislation has stated over the past week as Republicans refused to raise the minimum purchase age and enact any further gun control measures. The Florida legislation will now move on the House, who is crafting their own bill that limits large capacity magazines, which was not included in the Senate version. It's also not clear if the House version would allow the arming of teachers in the classroom. Either way, the teachers have already begun firearm shopping, with one teacher saying that Johnny will never again question about why he needs to know his stuff. Learn it. Talk about a makeover. Yes. What happened here? One host turned to another. Yes. It's magic. Magic. All right. And yet, I can't find that magic when I'm on the slot machines. West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin unveiled legislation on Monday that would help the DEA improve its ability to stop suspicious shipments of opioids coming into the U.S. The bill would change a previous law that made it harder for the DEA to freeze opioid shipments from drug companies. The law was featured in the show 60 Minutes and caused a public outcry as the opioid ec epidemic continues to ravage the U.S. That bill, called the Ensuring Patient Access and Effective Drug Enforcement Act, was written by Republican Representative Tom Marino, who withdrew his nomination as White House drug czar after the law came to light. Manchin said Marino's legislation wrongly weakened the DEA and that his bill would restore their full authority to combat drug shipments into the U.S. When asked about his bill, Marino said that it actually came from the Senate, particularly Orrin Hatch, who introduced the, it to the upper chamber. When Hatch was asked about it, he said that the idea of the law came from lawyers with the DEA and the Department of Justice. When other supporters of the legislation were asked about the bill, they said it was Hillary's fault. Sounds like there's a lot of blame to go around. It's and always no one better wants it. blame somebody else. By well, the way, uh, speaking of blame somebody else, why are you so late today? Um, Come on, make up an excuse. I was working. All right. 
Blaming somebody else. It was the traffic. The American way. Yes. Washington became the first state to pass a net neutral tr neutrality law, setting the state up for a battle with the FCC, who initially repealed net neutrality earlier this year. Washington State Governor Jay Inslee signed a bill Monday that forbids internet service providers from blocking and throttling web content and from charging websites for higher delivery speeds. Inslee said that all Washingtonians should enjoy equal and unfettered access to the educational, social, and economic power of the internet. But the victory may be short-lived. The FCC will likely take the case to court because the repeal contained a clause that forbade states from passing their own laws related to net neutrality. However, the FCC is facing its own legal challenges from attorneys general in nearly tw two dozen states who are joined with public interest groups and internet companies. In response, the FCC ordered that those states be throttled hard. Throttle, throttle, throttle. This was 5 on 20 News with Pedro Santa Cruz. And I'm Tammy King. Be sure to like and share and subscribe to our YouTube account. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all other social media for our latest Creative Tucson news and content. You can also free to get in touch with us at info at creativetucson.org. Thanks for watching. Watching. I can't talk. Watching. Thanks for watching. Stay Creative Tucson. <laughs>